Morning, welcome, and uh, oh look, I'm there now, I'm there now, Owen. morning Laura, congratulations on, uh, I was going to say baby number two, but people might think something strange is happening, <laughs> on grand baby number two, so you tucked in there, great to see you and uh, David with us this morning, oh let's, let's gather in the name of Jesus this morning in this place to worship and adore him. On October 31st, 1517, a long time ago, I wasn't born, trust me, Martin Luther nailed 95 theses to the door of Wittenberg Chapel, causing the birth of 
of what has become known as the Reformation. 95 statements about his belief that the only way to life was through the grace that is freely offered to us through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And later he wrote these words. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear for God hath willed his truth to triumph through us the prince of darkness grim. We tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fail him. One little word shall fail him. Did a quick Google search this week. People are not totally certain what word he's actually, he was referring to you. Is it, could it be the word liars, liar? He's calling out the evil one for all of the lies that he tells each and every one of us. Could we, could we put our own interpretation into the word? Could the little word be cross? Could it be life? Could it be truth? Could it be way? Could it be love? Could it be the little word grace? Whatever word Luther was thinking about, whatever word we think about when we sing songs like a mighty fortress is our God, I think Luther was inviting us to acknowledge that in Jesus, one small little word has destroyed the power that the evil one thought he wielded. There's nothing, nothing that we can do, that we could do, that we ever will do, that would save ourselves. There's nothing we can do to bring life to ourselves. Only Jesus. The evil one has been lying about the truth of life to each of us and to this world for far too long, telling us all that we can get life whatever way we want it. That's not true. There is nothing, nothing, Paul says, that can separate us from the love of God that is and through Jesus. It is only Jesus that can give us life, that can grant us the way to life. That's why we gather, why we are gathered in this place to sing his praises and worship him. That's why we come on a Sunday morning to lay our lives down before our Lord Jesus and once again say to him, I am yours, Lord. Here I am. So let's gather to worship our Lord and Savior this morning. Let's stand and sing together.
Lift up your eyes to the Lamb of God. Join the angels around the throne. Give Him glory, singing in praise, honor and power unto His name. Let's join together in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we gather in your name this morning in this place to come and remember what this day means for churches all over the world. Reformation Sunday, a day for us to remember that 500 plus years ago, Man of courage, challenged the way that the church was becoming, that the church was becoming focused on itself, its own preservation, its own being blessed, and not on you. So we gather this morning to remind ourselves again that without you, there is only one word to conclude each and, one, each and every one of our stories. And we remember this morning, because of you, death has lost its sting. So we thank you this morning for your son, our Lord Jesus. We thank you for his love. We thank you for his forgiveness, his grace, so freely offered to each and every one of us. That we can gather just as we are before the living God. We don't have to earn the right to be in your presence. We can come into your presence. And to lay our lives down before you. As an offering of praise. As a plea to you that you would fill us with your life. That you so freely offer to us that you would transform us by the power of your word, the power of your spirit present in our midst. Life is all you desire for each and every one of us, to fill us with your abundance. Come, Holy Spirit, into this place. Come be among us. We pray for those in the breakfast club this morning, the kids and Sunday school later, that you will be with them and breathe your life into them, that each of them will grow up to receive your grace. And for each of us who have come to faith in you, we'll have that faith renewed renewed to understand 
that we, your people, are called by you, blessed by you, and sent by you to be a blessing in this world. To go and share our stories, your story, your love, with all. Father God, as we gather in your name this morning, we know that this week is going to be a strange week. We've tried to make this thing called Halloween something fun. We speak about evil and make it fun. We speak about death and make it fun. We make it something to be enjoyed. And yet we know for so many people, so many people, they have no clue what lies beyond this life that we know. They don't know the reality of being separated from you. So as we enter into this week, we pray that you would shine through us, that we would be a light in a dark place. We would be salt in a world that so desperately needs it. Be with us this day, O oh God. Be with us this week in all that we do for your glory's sake. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us as one family to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom forever, forever and ever. Please join us in standing once again as we sing together. All to Jesus I surrender All to Him
more song together, but if you need to sit at any time, please do so. Okay. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Let me draw your attention to a couple of announcements this morning. If you're a visitor in our church this morning, you are warmly welcomed, but you'd be even more warmly welcomed next Sunday, because next Sunday is our lunch Sunday, where we have lunch after church, and we're not having a lunch. We're having a turkey dinner. Who's ready for more turkey dinner? Yeah, so... There are a ton of turkeys already in the freezer. It's all getting prepared. So yeah, we're having Christmas come early in the church next Sunday. So right after church next Sunday, we're going to gather in the hall for a fellowship um, dinner. So please, we'd love to see as many people next Sunday for that as we just uh, fellowship together. As you can see, it's Operation Christmas Child time. If you were coming in this morning, you'd have seen a table outside with the boxes uh, Ev, and uh, I didn't ask somebody else to help Ev, but if somebody can go out and help Ev after church this morning, he's going to have uh, these boxes and give them out uh, to you. We have 100 boxes. It'd be lovely if we could fill all 100 boxes. Um, as you know, we've been doing this now for a number of years. The idea that we get the privilege of blessing a child somewhere in the world. We don't know who that child is, but God knows who that child is. And so as you buy whatever you're buying, for whatever age group, 
that you put in those box. My prayer for you and for all of us is that we would pray that these gifts would change uh, the, the life of a young kid uh, as Operation Christmas Child uh, takes these boxes to places and teaches them about uh, Jesus through um, uh, Bible studies and uh, a course. So let's bless a number of kids um, as we get these boxes filled. You have three weeks, I think, that they will be returned by November 17th. You can drop them off anytime, but November 17th is the Sunday is the last day for us to get them so we can get them to North, uh, Longs, uh, North Shore Alliance Church um, for them to then take them um, to the central um, location. Uh, we've also got little advertising cards that we're giving out this morning. We have a number of these uh, that kind of just has a little Christmas scene in the front, tells people what's happening in our church at Christmas, and you th think, well, that's a little bit early. It's because on the back of it, we also have a little information about our Christmas market, and then we also have information about the MAID conference that we're doing, the Medical Assistance in Dying conference that we're collaborating with North Lawnsey United Church about 15th and 16th of November. And so um, we're giving these cards out. We will be giving these cards out on Thursday night. Thursday night, October 31st, we're gonna do our hot chocolate and cookies on the lawn. Uh, it won't be on the lawn because I think it's gonna be raining. So it'll be undercover. Uh, but we're gonna spend those couple of hours and uh, try and be a blessing, a light, uh, as we've been doing now for a number of years. Um, there are so many people, I cannot tell you, there's so many people out on the streets in this area, so many kids um, on that night. And so our prayer continues to be that we can reach them somehow. They've been, some come back every year and they, they remember that we keep doing this. So this year we're going to be giving out little cards. I think the youth is going to be trying to uh, kind of do something and connect with some of the families that have teenagers and things like that. So there's a ton of these cards. I would encourage you to take a few for yourself. I'm sure you have a neighbor, friends, relatives that you could pass these on to. Uh, please, uh, we don't want to have a bunch of these left at Christmas time. So get, take a few this morning from Ev and an Operation Christmas Child box or boxes um, as you leave uh, the church this morning. Uh, I've mentioned hot chocolate on Thursday night, looking forward to that. And then the following week, we start our, on the Thursday night, we start our Christmas choir practices. That's going to be November 7th. Uh, ladies, I've said this the past couple of weeks, we desperately need some ladies or gents who can sing very high um, because uh, there are a lot of men which we're really thankful about, uh, but we would like some ladies to join the choir. So if you're up for a bit of fun because we have a lot of fun doing this, I would encourage you to let Sophia know and we'll look forward to uh, meeting together for the Christmas choir. She has picked the pieces already, and, and it does uh, look um, good, I, I have to say. I'm personally excited because she's picked a Phil Wickham piece and downloaded four-part music for it, so um, I am quite excited. His new Christmas album comes out next week. If anybody's interested, it's not too early to sing Christmas songs. Trust me. Um, I came into the youth group on Friday night because they were folding the Christmas Operation Christmas Child boxes for us. They were playing Christmas music. Just saying. So they were having a lot of fun. So uh, over the past number of weeks, we've been doing this uh, sermon series. Yes, Russell? That's right. The clocks fall back next Saturday, so you have an extra hour in bed to get prepared for your turkey dinner. Yes, If you want to, that would be awesome. Is there, is there somebody doing an announcement about that this morning that I forgot to ask you about? Oh, no, Eileen's on her way up. Because you've all brought cookies in for Eileen. You were about to throw something at me, weren't you? No, I was going to be very kind. <laughs> <laughs> First just... of all, I'd like to thank all of you who have been so faithful over the last few months bringing cookies. It's been a blessing to the mission. It's been a blessing to me. I've enjoyed taking armfuls of cookies down to the mission. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, on the 30th of November, 
there will be, uh, uh, I didn't bring my notes. I didn't have any notes, but anyway, uh, there will be a luncheon, an Advent luncheon at um, Bethany Baptist Church. And we have a, a van going out there. So anyone who would like to go with us, it's at 12 noon um, on the 30th of November. If you'd like to go, come to the church and you can join us as we go out. I think we'll leave about 1045. Does and that sound good? It sounds good to me. And I'm driving, so be warned. <laughs> And if you don't like her driving, then you can drive and take a bunch with you, okay? <laughs> There's a sign-up sheet on the table where the cookies are in the, in the room where we have coffee. And I would like anyone who wants to go to do it. We can take as many as we want, but I need to know today because they have to be prepared for this and they have a huge banquet, so... And along with that, it'll be an opportunity for all of you, especially the men, to find out what Lighthouse Harbor Ministries does firsthand, not through me, but through those who work on the ships and at the centers. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to work right on the North Shore, to be contagious Christians here on the North Shore, by going down to the mission, you have to sign up and talk to them. You can't just go down. But every night, every day of the year, they have, they're open from 6 to 10 o'clock for the uh, seamen who are on the ships around the harbor on the North Shore. And they would love to have more volunteers. Not just the men, but couples can do this too. And it's really a heartwarming thing. You can even make friends for life. We, I still hear from one of the Indian sailors who was here years ago. He phones me a couple of times a year. And it's just wonderful to be able to share with him. And the joy that he had being here, meeting Canadians, and being blessed by what the mission does. So please come, please sign up, please do it today. Thanks loads. And Eileen and I will be in the hall for a few minutes after church if you wanna ask us any questions or more details or just let us know you're coming. Especially let us know you're coming. That part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie, for saving my life. Uh, so during this series, we've been inviting someone up uh, just to tell a little bit of their story. And so this morning, Wilco is coming up. As I said, Wilco is my next victim. Do you want to go there? Oh, yeah, you can use this one. There we go. Should be on, I presume. Have a seat. Just get, it, yeah, it should be on just a little, but little buttons up. Owen will look after you, don't worry, just keep the mic quite close. Okay. So we'll go starter question, what do you do for a living? What do I do for a living? Yeah, tell us what uh, you do. So I work for a mining consulting nice firm. Nice and close. Turn it up a little bit, Owen. Uh, Gords, I think. Working now? Oh, there you go. Okay, so I work for a mining consulting company. I'm an electrical engineer. Um, a long time ago, I'm now an electrical control system department manager. Um, so that's sort of what I do. Awesome, awesome. So tell us a little bit about your story. Um, like we've been hearing from a number of people, mm -hmm. so we'd like to hear from you. Tell us a little bit about um, how you came to this point of being involved in a church mm -hmm. and stuff. I think my, my story is a little bit like Miriam and Dion, um, uh, Gary, um, Dion, and um, having grown up in a Christian family, um, very Calvinistic Christian family, my parents are, are uh, from the Netherlands. Um, they emigrated to South Africa in 
the late 80s, uh, late, late 50s, uh, early 60s, um, and that's where they got married. And uh, we four siblings grew up in a in a house where um, going to church is just the thing to do. Um, growing up in a country where people are uh, the first thing you would ask when you new, meet new people, what church are you going to? And that's that's about it um, because everybody was was attending church. Um, so that's how we grew up. Um, I remember um, my parents, especially my mom, um, really showing um, a faith in Christ and always putting Jesus in front in every situation that comes is um, um, first talk to the Lord, talk to, to Jesus, um, pray, pray. Um, my dad would read out of the Bible at, at, at uh, dinner afterwards, pray for us. My mom would, on Sunday mornings, um, read a little bit of a dedication for the week. Um, um, and, and then we will go to church. Um, so we, eventually I, I sort of got into my teens, um, went to youth group um, at church. That's where I met Delrica as well. Um, and I think it was sort of starting out at this youth group and starting to think for myself and not a little, not, not like, mm. okay, you have to go to church or whatever because mm. your parents told you so. Um, but that's where I sort of found um, just going at Sunday evenings, we would go come together as, as a big, big youth group. Uh, that was our, our time because afterwards we were going to do something fun um, but sitting in church in the evenings and the the, the, the evening prayer, uh, evening services would be a lot uh, more on the Heidelberg catechisms and just teaching us a little bit more on what what it's all about where where does everything come in place and just listening to that some somewhere somehow it, it, I said, okay, this is this is what I want to do, and this mm -hmm. is where my life will go. Um, I think you 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 grow up, and okay, now you're a Christian, um, but you your faith um, it ebbs and flows. Uh, so um, I I think you sometimes you you maybe a little bit away from Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that mic seems to be cutting out. I'm going to yeah. give you this one. Go for it. Yeah. So sometimes um, you you would you, you would feel you you might be a little bit f further away from 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 God, and sometimes it it comes back to you, and sometimes it's when you have a lot of grief or um, something happens in your in your life um, where. You, your your faith is being tested. That's that's sort of when when God is calling you again. And um, when we got married, uh, Elrika and I had um, um, a miscarriage. Um, so our first firstborn was. Uh, we waited a long time, and um, at 27 weeks, we we lost the baby. Mm -hmm. um, and that that was really hard for us to mm -hmm. to um, to handle. Um, and we had our, our uh, reverend coming over to us, and he, he gave this, this really beautiful words that before you are born, you are formed. Uh, God knows you before you are born, and um, he, 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 he's already chosen you. Um, and that, that, was, that, that was really comforting words for us. And then soon afterwards, um, Rulop was born, and the same reverend, he came over to us, and I remember that day, um, Rulo was sleeping, so, and the reverend came and he chatted and had a bit of coffee, and, and I, 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 I realized he's, he's, not, he's not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I realized, well, he's waiting for Rulo to wake up. And, and at that, 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 that point, I, um, Rulo eventually woke up, and he took Rulof in his hands, and he and he, he prayed over him, um, and and that was such a beautiful and powerful um, image to us, um, something that we 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 kept with us um, 
so out of tragedy, um, sometimes there's, there's things that are happening. So um, we just have to trust in Jesus um, that he's going to just bring, bring us back to him. He's, he's got a plan. Sometimes we don't understand it. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit of my story. Oh, uh, awesome. And you can hear the hope uh, mm -hmm. in the story right, for a lot of people that don't have any kind of faith, it's difficult to see where they get their hope, right, mm -hmm. lasting hope. So you were, you have you, incredible start to your life in South Africa, like literally everybody is kind mm -hmm. of in that environment is Christian, which church you go to, and then you come to Vancouver, Yeah. right, is it the same here? No, it's not. Uh, obviously, um, it, it was sort of the first time where we realized, well, it's, it's people around us are not, not of the same faith. They might be struggling. They, everybody is busy with their own thing. Um, there's no unified um, way of Christian life um, that anchors everybody. So, so that, that was quite a, an eye-opener to us. Um, so how do, how, what does it mean for you then to think about for you to be in an environment that's completely different from South Africa and think about this idea of being contagious? What does the word contagious Christian mean to you? Yeah, so I, I, I think we, we need to be sharing. Share, share, share the good word. Share Jesus' love with everybody. Um, growing up in South Africa, there were two things that we were taught is when you are with friends, you don't talk about politics and you don't talk about religion. Um, it's funny, but it, it, um, it's something that, for me, it's, it's not that easy to do, to, to just talk. But I, I, mm. I think what you need to do and what I've tried to do is, is to share your story. What did you do over a weekend? Mm. I went to church or my, my, my church is doing this. Um, just sharing it with people and I... I remember our HR manager at, um, at a function one day, he, he said to me, you know, I, um, I've heard you're a Christian. And I said, how did you hear this? And I thought, okay, he's the HR manager. He's going to be sort of now talking to me about this. And he said, well, he's also a Christian. And he's going to a church, a big church in, in, in town. And um, I don't really know how he heard that I'm a Christian, but somehow I must have shared it with someone. And, and I think that's, that's the big thing, is, is sharing your faith. Don't be scared that you're going to be um, saying something that somebody will be offended of. We, we're not going to be running to work with the Bible under our arms, but um, we have to talk about what, what life we have and where, where we are from and, and what we experience in, in what we have. Yeah, so hard question that I've been asking everybody yeah. for you to share. We've been talking about being, becoming more contagious. What's one thing that you can share with us about how you could become a little bit more contagious? I, I, th I think when going to work to be a little bit more conscious about when somebody asks you, how was your weekend, is, is to share what we have in in our church is is to share our christian faith mm -hmm. um so that's that's something that i really want to do is is not to be shy of 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 sharing that we we as a church we have an outreach or come to the north shore we we have we, we have a church here so so that's just again just trying to be more conscious of sharing things with people awesome didn't he do well? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Go on to invite uh, the kids. Uh, Miriam, is it you? Oh, Berlin is taking the kids to Sunday school this morning. I'm going to invite the ushers up uh, to collect the morning offering. Welcome back. Let's pray together. Our oh, Father, we thank you for the blessing of our stories, your story that we can share with others. We thank you for this church family. We pray now uh, by your 
mercy and grace, that you would receive these now our offerings and that uh, they would be a symbol of everything we are and have, that it would all be used for your glory's sake. In your name, amen. As we collect the offering, we're going to stand and sing together again. got Wilco on double duty this morning, so I'm going to invite Wilco to come forward. He's going to lead us in prayer, and after that, Sandy's going to come and read our, le- our scripture for us this morning. Good morning again. Um, so I just want to first read a very beautiful passage in, in John, John 1, uh, just before we pray. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was, uh, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. 
uh, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you this morning and bow our heads, listening to your word, believing in your word, your Son, Jesus Christ. You have given us life through him. He poured out his love for us, a love that is immense. It is beyond our understanding. Help us to live in your love and be your lights in this world, today and tomorrow. We pray for your spirit to, to work powerfully in, in, the heart, in our hearts and the hearts of people around us to follow you, to praise you, see your light, and to love one another. O oh God, you have given us beauty around us um, in nature to enjoy. You have given us family and friends who love us dearly. You have given us food and shelter. You've given us hands and minds to earn an income. You've given us ability to learn and do good. You've given us your word to comfort and strengthen us. We are so blessed by everything you give us, and, and we thank you and praise you for being our good Father. Help us to share your message of peace and salvation to everyone. Father, after the flood and devastation last week here in BC and other places in the world, we pray for the people that have been affected by, by the flooding and other, other natural disasters. We pray for the family and the loved ones of, of people who have lost their lives in the floods. Give them strength to continue their lives after this tragedy. We pray that the, that the wars that are raging in the world in Ukraine, the Middle East and other places come to an end. We pray for all the people that are suffering because of these wars. Bring them to safety, give them food, shelter, and care. Give them hope and take away their suffering, O Lord. We pray that you guide the leaders in these regions and around the world to stop these wars and bring peace. Our God, we live in a world that does not know you and have forgotten your name. We live in a world where people are inward driven, always trying to get the best for themselves. Help us, O Lord, to love our neighbor, to spread your good message everywhere, to shine in the darkness and share your love you have given us for free. We pray for this church and our community here in North Vancouver. During fall and in, and, and in anticipation of Christmas, there are so many activities at our church and in our community happening or coming up, up soon. Bless all the people that work to keep your church alive. Give them strength and perseverance to continue your good work. We pray for your love and comfort for the people in our congregation and those who are dealing with various illnesses and age-related conditions. We pray for Dwayne Turcott, Rosalind Knight, Isabel Metcalf, Una Wood, and Janice Darlington. We pray for people who are in long-term care, Winnie Bradford, Joanne Graham, Ellen Arnett, Anne and Alfred Cockle, Louise Renard, and Lorne Dennis. We also pray for people in our community that are not mentioned by name, but are struggling with loneliness, illness, or, or being cared for their immediate families, friends and caregivers, for, for strength and your love and peace. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is Mark 8, verses 27 to 38. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say Jan John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. 
He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Let me uh, mention the lovely plant that is on our table this morning. Carlin brought it in. Um, tomorrow is the first anniversary of Ron's death. Uh, but thanks be to God about Jesus is our living hope. And Ron is not dead. Carlin, you're in our thoughts and prayers for tomorrow. Well, question to begin this morning. Um, are you excited about being contagious Christians? Uh, that was a rhetorical question, but thanks for answering. That uh, means some of you are kind of listening. Uh, well, I hope you are. Uh, last week, uh, when I was interviewing Alana, and she shared about her passion for Disneyland, I'm sure I was not the only one um, who felt, and it wasn't Alana that was doing this, but kind of felt there was a little bit of a pokey, pointy elbow nudging uh, me and I'm sure some of you when she admitted her sense about having the same passion for sharing her love of Jesus as she does when she shares her love for everything Disney. I think that's what it means to be contagious right there. That we would be as contagious for Jesus as we are for Disney. Being passionate about sharing what Jesus means to us is how we impact the lives of others. So let's recap our math formula one more Sunday morning. The HP plus CP plus CC equals MI. I'm sure all of you are kind of repeating this over a cup of coffee every day. Uh, MI, maximum impact in the life of another. And to do that, we need three things. HP, high potency, a factor that relates to our relationship with God. As we go deeper in our faith, and Alana highlighted this last week, and we've heard this a lot actually over the past number of weeks, about the fact we need to go deep in our faith. We have to become passionate about our faith, passionate about Jesus, because only then, as we go deeper in our relationship with God, can we increase our potential potency. CP, close proximity, a factor that relates to our relationship with others, our closeness with others. The deeper our relationships are with other people, the more likelihood our lives will actually impact them. More on that in a few moments. CC, clear communication. For the past two weeks, we've been looking at two parts, two aspects of clearly communicating. The first is sharing our stories, our lives, our experiences, our passions. I gave you three questions last week that I hope you all took away and actually answered them. Three questions to sketch out your story. I would highly recommend that you try to do this. You might think you know your story, but it's only when you actually put pen to paper and you really try to think about it that you'll be amazed what comes out. Three questions. How did your journey to faith begin? What's your background story? Question two. Why did you come to faith? What was it that made you make that commitment to Jesus? You heard that from Wilco this morning, just something clicked one day as he's listening in church or whatever it might be. And question three, what does Jesus mean to you? 
Perhaps the most important, but perhaps the hardest of all questions to answer. Why are you following him? Make it personal. What does he mean to you? Three questions, your story. The second aspect of clear communication is understanding his story. What is the God story, the Jesus story? Last week, I highlighted a way to summarize that using three words. The first word is the word death. The Bible tells us that we have all sinned and all fallen short of the glory of God. Sin's a word very few people use these days, and it's certainly not a word that people like to hear anything about. Like, who really is going to walk into a church on a Sunday morning if the sign on the front lawn reads something like, all welcome to worship on Sunday, come and hear the preacher remind us we're all a bunch of sinners. Or, come and hear more about your failures every Sunday morning. The reality is, though, all our stories on their own have only one possible answer or ending. All of our stories. And that conclusion is death. And the Bible tells us that death is the last word spoken over us because humanity has made its choice. We've rejected God's way. We've rejected God's offer of life lived in obedience to Him. And instead, we want to live our lives our own way, satisfying our own desires, feeding our own appetites. And as a result, by rejecting God, we are destined for the opposite of what God offers. We're we're destined for the opposite of life, death. It's a great start to his story, isn't it? Really hook people in. But thanks be to God, his story His story has two more significant words. The second word is, of course, Jesus. Or, as I showed you last week in the diagram, you could summarize it in the cross. Jesus' birth, his life, his ministry, his death, his resurrection, his ascension into heaven, and his sending of the Spirit all combine to create one vital effect— that we saw in the use of a very simple diagram to illustrate this. Jesus has created a way across the chasm. He has created an exit door through death, we might say, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is what word three of his story is all about, life. Jesus has opened up the way for all of us back to life, back to God, so we can once again feast on the tree of life from where all of creation flowed in the very beginning. His story is a love story. His story is the greatest love story ever told. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him has the way now to eternal, abundant, overflowing life. And this is the reason for all of us to think about becoming more contagious. Because for those who do not believe in Jesus, for those who cannot wait to have a fun time on Thursday night because they've no clue of anything else beyond death, there is only one word that will ultimately be spoken over them at the end of their lives, and that is the word death. But thanks be to God, when our contagiousness, if that is a word, has an effect on someone else, on another, death need not be the last word spoken over them. And that death is transformed into life, life beyond all of our imaginings. We sit here this morning and we can ask ourselves, do we know this? Do we know this to be a truth, a reality? And then we can ask even a deeper question, do we believe in it? And we can go even deeper still and say, do we think that we do understand and have the greatest gift we could give to another person ever? If the answer is yes, we do have the greatest gift that could be given to anyone ever because we have the gift of life to share with another. What do we need to do. 
Mark chapter 8, verse 34, deny oneself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. Do we believe in our heads Jesus is the best news anyone could ever receive, that everyone needs to receive in the world? Then in order for us to be contagious, we need to make a commitment to live for Jesus. It's not about living lives to merely believe in him, but living lives to follow him, becoming contagious for him. Over the past few weeks, we've hopefully come to a realization. We can be be contagious for Jesus. It doesn't, you don't need to be, have a master's in divinity to do this. We have a story to tell. We do understand ourselves why we believe in Jesus. And we are and should be able to share a little bit about the Jesus story. So we have all this knowledge, but knowing it all actually is not enough. The reality is for us, we have to cross the line. We must act upon what we know and become contagious in the life of another. And that requires each and every one of us to make a choice. It's not merely about sharing inspiration with another person and telling them how great Disneyland is. It's a great story, Alana. It's about us having that same passion and having that same sense that Welko was sharing with us this morning, that we should share a little bit more about who Jesus is. We have to cross the line. We have to deny ourselves, turn from our current lives. We have to live for Jesus, follow his way to true life. I asked at the beginning, are you excited about being contagious Christians? Well, let's say all of us are. Let's say we all repeat that, yes. Are we ready to go and impact the lives of others? What might we encounter, though? And that actually is what the remainder of this series is all about. Once we make that commitment that we are going to try and do this, what might we encounter outside these walls? So to begin this morning, I want to turn to another passage that's in Mark. Mark chapter 4, reading from verse 26. Listen to a parable that Jesus once told. This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he doesn't know how. All by itself. The soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. And as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. What's this little parable telling us? Well, I think three things, okay? Three things. Number one, the impact we have on the life of another person is actually out of our direct control. The impact we might have on the life of another person is actually not something we can control. The farmer sows the seed, and night and day it grows, even while the farmer is asleep. Ultimately, the impact we have on the life of another is out of our control. Now that, ironically, is good news freeing news because someone else's life, someone else's access to eternal life is not dependent upon how good any of us are at impacting them. However, here's the second point. The farmer is involved in the process of growth. In the parable, the farmer sows the seed. Sows the seed on ground that I'm presuming he has 
he has pre-prepared to sow the seed on. No doubt he's being involved in nurturing the growth as best he can, watering it, fertilizing the fields. And then when the grain is ready, he is the one who helps to reap that which has grown. The farmer is involved in the process of growth. So even though growth is out of his direct control, he is involved in it. We are called to be contagious, to be involved. Aspect number three of the parable is that growth occurs over time. It is not immediate. It begins a seed, it becomes stalk, then a head, then grain, and then reaping. An experienced, a patient farmer can see these stages of growth taking place, and he knows what each stage is, and he knows what each stage requires, and when everything is ready for reaping. The farmer can see the seasons of growth that are occurring and what needs to be done to nurture that growth. In a book called I Once Was Lost by Don Everts and Doug Schaup, they use this analogy, the parable, to explain the five seasons of growth, what they call five thresholds, in a person's journey to Jesus. And I have really enjoyed the book and the follow-up, Breaking the Huddle. I think what they've grasped in this book is really helpful for each of us to understand because it's helpful to grasp an awareness of the thresholds that people go through on their journey to Jesus. Because here's my main thesis. Uh, In order to have maximum impact, It is not a quick shove the person across the line approach. But their journey, like ours, requires nurturing. That's what we're required to be involved in. We need to be, it's about time, it's about support, it's about help, it's about leading and guiding someone in their faith to Jesus. So I want to summarize these thresholds. And I want you to be thinking about them in terms of your own life and perhaps in the life of someone that you are thinking of in this series. Who is it that you would like to share a little bit more about your faith with? Where are they on this journey? So the first threshold requires a person to trust you. Hands up. If you think this is an effective way to have maximum impact on someone's life, I'm going to encourage you this afternoon to go up to a random person's door, bang on the door loudly so that they will answer, and when they open the door, you will say these exact words, I'm here to tell you, you need Jesus. Who's excited about being contagious this afternoon? In order to be able to help, to sh- in order to be able to share your story with someone, you need to have a relationship of trust with that person. The first important thing is actually having a relationship with another person in order to be able to help them journey to faith. So let me introduce to you a young 10-year-old boy who one day was introduced to the main youth leader of a local church. The youth leader's name was Anne. The young boy had no clue who Anne was. He had no clue what a youth group was. He had no clue what a church was. But Anne invited him and his sister to come to their youth group. She didn't try to convert him or anyone on that first time they met. She merely invited them to come and play a game and games at a youth group. Slowly but surely, over weeks, Months, in fact, Anne became someone that he and his friends grew to trust, grew to love. It was clear she was pouring herself out on each and every young person in that youth group. She was something they knew cared for them. 
She had become invested in their lives. So at some point in that young person's life, he had crossed the first threshold, and he now trusted her. The second threshold requires a person to become curious, to move from being complacent to curious. For the young boy in my story, he used to hate the 15-minute devotional time that happened at every youth group. 15 minutes away from playing another game of pool, another game of soccer, having a chance on the table tennis table, or just hanging out with his friends. But slowly but surely, he started to listen. He started attending even the youth fellowship that gathered on Sunday nights. Not just the youth group on a Saturday night, but the youth fellowship event on a Sunday night. And lo and behold, he started attending church on Sunday mornings. Started to listen to what was being said, what Anne and others kept teaching them. He was becoming curious. I think this stage, this threshold, is when we can invite someone to come and see for themselves. We're inviting them to become and be curious what church is, what Christianity is all, all about, who Jesus is. The third threshold requires a person to become open to the change that is now being called upon in their lives. They're now hearing about this sense of what it means to be a Christian, and they've been closed to it for so long, but now they're starting to give some indication that they're open to it. They might have said, well, I'm not interested in Christianity or church or Jesus. I just like the youth group. But now they start to become involved. They want to spend more time at all of the events going on in the church, and their questions begin to shift, and they start to uh, shift from questions like, well, when is the next coffee time or fellowship event, to questions like, well, what happens at these Bible studies you're advertising, or do you attend a home group or a life group yourself, and how long have you been a Christian yourself? The young boy continued to attend the church youth group week after week after week for months, and eventually he himself started to ask questions, volunteer to read scripture even in the Bible class on a Sunday morning. He even started to sing. Oh my goodness, imagine singing praise choruses at the start of the Sunday evening fellowship meeting. The fourth threshold requires a person to start seeking. There are visible signs of intentionality in their behavior. You start to see people asking, what does it mean to be a Christian? How, how does someone become a Christian? How, how do you read your Bible? How do you pray? When do you pray? Oh, are there things you're not allowed to do when you become a Christian? The young boy continued to go to youth every week. And he slowly but surely is now joining the praise group on a Sunday morning. He's playing the drums at Youth Fellowship. He's helping to lead the worship service on a Sunday morning during the busy months of summer seasons. He was starting to read some of the books that Anne was continually giving to him starting to read some of the Bible study materials that they were sharing with all of the young people. Bible study materials that said, how, how do you become a Christian? What does it mean to be a disciple? He was starting to pray when they broke into small groups. And there was one other thing that he, he had become very aware of. He was beginning to feel those nudges, those pointy elbows nudging him to make a choice to believe in Jesus, and he was resisting the elbows as much as he possibly could. When he went to some of those big youth gatherings in the summer, and the speaker was talking about being a Christian and having one of those one wonderful altar calls at the end of the service, it all sounded good, all sounded right, all sounded doable, until they said, now stand up, come forward, and we'll pray for you. He wasn't quite ready for that kept his head down. 
probably nobody was looking at him, but he felt that everybody was looking at him because there was something inside him that was encouraging him to get up, put your hand in the air, walk forward. I think it's easy to be in a relationship of trust with someone. You all have them. You all have those relationships with somebody else. But what you need to discern is, where are those people on the stages of growth? Where are they on their journey? And that's a little bit more difficult to establish, isn't it? Because you might think someone's actually seeking, but in fact, they're just a little bit curious because they are in their very early stages of growth. They're trying to make some sense of what church is, what Christianity is. Here's the thing. They don't need all the answers. They just need some signs from you about what it is that you believe in, what it is that you have given your life to, what's filling you, what's giving you hope. Why have you got this kind of joyous expression? Why are you excited about going to church? Why do you go to church? As they move from being curious and become open to change to actually seeking for themselves, you will have opportunities to share your story and his story with them. If you keep your eyes and ears open to what they're asking. It might begin with you being able just to share your favorite Bible story with them. It might begin with you buying a book. When's the last time you went to a Christian bookstore or Indigo and went to the, the, the Christian section? Or ask someone for some books that they could read. When's the last time you spoke to an elder or your pastor or a friend in church because you wanted to talk to them about someone in your life and you're trying to work out where they're at in their faith and how you can help them a little bit more? It's about being involved in their journey, trying to work out where they're at from being curious to open to seeking. And through all of it, if you're patient with yourself, you will have the privilege to keep praying for this person. You might even get the opportunity to pray with them at some point. Ask God as you're journeying through, God, give me the words to speak to them if I meet them for coffee or go for a walk with them. God, give me some insight as to where they are on the journey. Which threshold have they crossed? What are they just about to cross on their journey? God willing, one day, one day, they will cross that fifth and final threshold and they will choose life for themselves. They'll enter the kingdom of God. They will make a decision and they will tell you they have put their life into the hands of Jesus. Do you know, for four years, that young boy had been attending youth group every Saturday, youth fellowship every Sunday night, church every Sunday morning, various youth events and gatherings. My goodness, he was being pummeled. Four years. And it took the week leading up to Easter in 1985 for things to all come together. The annual four-day youth retreat had happened, at the church. It was fantastic. The speaker was incredible. I'm still in touch with him. Everything he said meant sense. And so as a young teenage boy, on Good Friday, March 28th, 1985, I finally got on my knees and prayed that Jesus would come into my heart. Four years for me to journey through all those thresholds, all those seasons of growth to get to the point of crossing the line. And here's the thing, I look back at Anne and others like Jim, John, Christine, Donald, Kay. Man, they had the patience of saints. So many involved in the church that never gave up on me and my friends. They continued to walk with us and many, many others patiently praying for us, supporting us, never rushing us, never pushing us, but helping us to grow slowly but surely through all the thresholds. From a seed, to a stalk, to a head, to grain. When we were finally ready to ripen and be reaped. 
over the past weeks. You've heard the stories of others in our congregation, and I hope you've heard time and time and time again how their lives have been shaped and influenced by others. Even this morning, Wilco's story started with his parents and the impact his mom and his dad had upon his early life. To be contagious, we know we have to have this close proximity in the lives of other people. I think the evil one has had his own way far too long. I think the evil one has stopped all of us from being involved in the lives of others. Because we've bought into a lie that he's been whispering to all of us or screaming to all of us in the world that we cannot help someone on their journey unless we have all the answers because they're going to ask us something. How can there be a God of love if there's so much suffering in the world? And at that point, we want to die and just give up. I think, actually, most of the time that I reflect on my journey It was more about people asking questions, just listening for the answers that I had. Questions that showed I was being curious, questions that showed I was becoming a little bit more open, questions that showed them I was starting to legitimately seek for myself. So ask them to share with you what they're thinking what they're struggling with, what their doubts and fears are. Invite them to come and see for themselves. Just journey with them. And you keep your eyes and ears open for those seasons of growth. One day, you might just wake up and look out, and you'll see they're ready. Are we excited about being contagious? Being involved in someone else's journey to Jesus Christ. That someone that we know and love, that we've a gift to offer them. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, I pray that this week that you will put on our hearts, minds, and lives that one person or multiple people that have been in our lives, involved in our lives for so long, And help us to have fresh eyes and ears. Help us have the courage that Welka was talking about this morning to just share, to become involved, to ask a question. Just find out where they are on their journey. And we trust that you will help us Help all of us to support those across the thresholds, across all of these seasons of growth, so that they too can receive the greatest gift ever. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please join us in standing once again.
can I be to so faithful a friend to so loving a king singing what can be said what can be sung as a praise of your name for the things you have done oh my words could not tell not even in as we go from this place, we are indeed thankful, thankful for the gift of life that you have given to each and every one of us. So may we go blessed to be the most incredible blessing in the life of another. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the presence and power and blessing of the Holy Spirit go with us and remain with us today and always. And all of God's people said together, amen. God bless you all. Hot chocolate on the lawn on Thursday night. If anybody wants to come and help, help serve. And next Sunday is Turkey Sunday. Look forward to it. God bless you all. Fire burn.